good evening everybody behalf of the steam club of rajalakshmi institute of technology i welcome you all to the third webinar of our steam technical webinar series thanks for once again joining us in this late hour so today we are going to uh, see a software called alice now alice is a software which is created by the computer science department of uh, carnegie mellon university if any of you have watched a, a video called the last lecture uh, by Ran Ron randy posh uh, so you can go to youtube and you can search a video called the last lecture by randy posh uh, it's a very famous it's a very inspirational lecture and uh, uh, we came to know about the software by watching that particular lecture so it's a very highly inspirational lecture so uh, um, mr randy posh is uh, is no more i would direct you to watch that lecture so this is one of the legacy which has been handed down by him and his team so this software alice it is a software through which uh, a person can learn the fundamentals of programming without actually knowing consciously that he is learning about the fundamentals of programming so it is more like of, of course uh, we saw another software called algodoo uh, two weeks before that is also a fun software which you can play around but the objective of that particular software is to learn the mechanics the physics behind uh, the things that are happening in nature around us now the objective of this software and another fun software is to learn the basic programming concepts by having fun so this alice is actually a storytelling software so you can think up of a story and uh, within a short span of time you can just create the world bring the characters into that world and you can automatically start uh, a narration of your story in the form of animation and there is also an another option where uh, you can interact with the characters through some user inputs you have mouse you have keyboard so you have the arrow keys you can interact with them and you can make them move as per your requirement so that automatically means that you are also capable of creating games using the software so first uh, let's start with the software once again as i told you all the, all of these webinars are just some introduction to these softwares we will not be covering in depth we have plan of conducting some uh, short courses on these softwares maybe one or two days uh, hands on workshop or we are also planning to have some online courses with some uh, uh, 8 to 10 modules of each some 30 minutes duration so which you can watch to have an in depth knowledge about the software so the main objective of today's uh, webinar like any other webinar is only to give you an overview of the software the capabilities of the software so you can understand the capabilities of the software and you can download the software which is an open source software so uh, the link has already been shared with you or if you did not uh, get it and just go to google so just search for alice or the url of the website is uh, www.alice.org you can go and you can download the software for free and you can start playing with it so i have downloaded it and i have installed it in my laptop now when you click it so this is what you will see first so you have a welcome screen and so let's dive into the software so you have you can see that there is a tutorial and there is another tab called the recent worlds so these are the things which uh, i created just uh, today and day, yesterday so you may have received a video in your uh, uh, as a reminder okay in your gmail so that was also created i will just uh, open it so it took some 30 minutes to create this particular uh, animation so you don't be scared by all these things uh, we'll be at the end of the lecture you'll be able to uh, easily see this and understand what it is so at present please uh, bear with me so this is the world which i created so this is the animation you might have seen in the remainder video which you might have received in your email so there is a a vehicle that is coming in and a person is uh, getting out of it and they are having a conversation about today's webinar and they are starting most probably to the earth and we have our uh, 
Steam Club logo, I mean uh, the title. So Steam Club is saying you to join it and I hope you have joined us today. So this animation took some uh, 30 minutes time. So for a person who knows how to create such animation, it just takes 30 minutes time. And what you see here, right? I am scrolling through a set of lines, right? So this is your actual uh, script for the animation. Now it's very easy to create this, okay, one after the other. So at the end of the lecture, you'll be able to create with ease, okay, your own story. You can come up with your own character, your own story, and you can create simple animation like this very, very easily. And you cannot just create animation, you can also create some games. So you saw a video, right? This You can also interact with that video. So let me open on another uh, recent world which I did just, uh, I was working in the morning. So this is in another world. So you can see there are some buildings uh, and there is a dinosaur, a triceratops. And you can see a merry-go-round, it's getting vanished. It says, oh my god, it has vanished. Now, if you see, uh, I have made this a little bit interactive. Okay. So, if I click, if I click somewhere else, nothing will happen. But I have programmed it in such a way that if you click on this triceratops, its size becomes half of its original size. Okay. See, so at least I am clicking it here. Nothing is happening. But I am clicking here. Now, it is transformed into half of the size. Once again, I click outside. Nothing happens. I click it inside. It's once again becoming half of its uh, previous size. So this happens again and again till it becomes completely invisible to our naked eye. So these two are just to, to show you. Okay, actually this also took some 15 to 20 minutes to model. This part. So uh, the fundamental of any animation is first you have to model the world, then you have to model the characters. Okay, so let's go into this uh, uh, particular world. You can see that. So this is a character. And the statue is another character, okay. And you have this merry-go-round. You have this building. You can see that these characters are moving around. Okay, I can just click and I can move them around, right? So first I choose the world, then I populate the world with the characters I need. Then I have to start programming them. All right. So enough of uh, the stuff which you already did. Now let's do something new. Okay. So the moment you open it. This is the screen you are going to see. Okay. So you can choose a template or you can create your own world. Uh, let me choose a template like, uh, so uh, we saw one with the sand and one with the space. Let's open one with water. Okay. Just for fun. Okay. So I'm just going to play around and through that process, you can just uh, have a look at it and learn. See, softwares like these will help you to learn all these concepts only through something called as, you know, playful exploration. Okay. If you're not good at something and if you really want to be good at that particular thing, let it be anything. Don't try to achieve the maximum efficiency in the first few efforts itself. Okay. So try, try to do even a smaller, simpler thing. It doesn't matter if the quality of that animation is very low, but you have really learned something when you are doing that. Then you do it again and again, you practice and you try to improve the quality slowly. Okay. So, uh, you might have seen the video which I just showed, right? The spaceman, they just walked in, okay, and they just flew through towards the lunar craft. You can see that their hands and legs were not moving. So, through this software, we can also do that. We can make that happen. But it's up to us, okay, to, to what level you want to do, it's completely up to us, right? So, just play around. Learning is the main objective. Just play around and over a period of time, the quality of your animation and the quality of your game will be very, very high. So that's how learning happens. So now let me, uh, so once I've selected, here you can see, right? You can see the version here. Now let me explain the layout. Okay. So you can see uh, one window here to your left to top side. Then adjust into that, you have another window where you can see the version. Then you have another window to the right which is named as events and you have a window to the bottom right where it says world dot my first method and you have another one to your left to bottom which talks about world details so now you have four windows okay four sub panes of my overall alice window okay 
so this window the one in the left top it is called as your object window or it's otherwise called as your object tree window and this is called as your world window so the world and the characters you are going to populate in that world is going to be here this is your world window then to the right you have your events window so i will tell you what is an event so event is something that happens around you it can be sensed and it can be triggered okay so this is where uh, when i see i just showed you that i clicked on the triceratops and it automatically stop uh, started to shrink okay so i gave a event here so on mouse click decrease the size of the triceratops that is the dinosaur okay so that is the event so stuff happen okay when something happens uh, mostly something which we do okay like clicking a mouse or moving your mouse over it or pressing a particular button so it's more like uh, in certain software this is called as a trigger triggers okay so you can click the trigger and something happens a series of events happens okay so when the world starts that is when i click the play button okay here i have told that do this world dot my first method right which is nothing but here so whatever i am going to uh, trace here that is the fourth window in my right uh, bottom okay this is my uh, method window okay i'll be explaining you shortly what is a method and what is a event so event i just uh, explained to you okay uh, there are certain other concepts if you are familiar with the oops concept oops concepts so oops stands for uh, oops that is object oriented programming uh, okay uh, so these are the basic uh, uh, if you start learning some programming using uh, java or python so these are the basic concepts you learn okay so even this is uh, we we can call this kind of programming right like the programming which are going to analyze as the graphical programming okay but these are also based on the objects so in order to first understand object oriented programming language you should first understand what are objects first okay so that's what we are going to see here so and the world details is your fifth window so you can see there are sub panes here one is called as properties and the second one is called methods and the third one is called a function okay now quickly let's see what is an object okay so what is an object so here let me say there is a, a button called add objects let me click that and you can see a list of objects here okay so you can see one here right so once i click you can see that there are lots of uh, three dimensional objects here so object is just an object which whatever you call so you may look around you and you may find your computer a computer is an object or may find your uh, uh, a tube light or fan above you so that is an object so everything you see around you is an object so what our object we are talking about in the programming there is a actual same analogy as to, as any other object that you can see around you so let's say you have a laptop in front of you so i have a laptop in front of me so the laptop is an object so that laptop has something called as color okay so my laptop is red color red in color and the laptop has something called as weight okay so let's say my laptop uh, it is around 3 to 4 kg so the color weight so these things are called as the properties of the particular object okay so they are the properties so they describe the uh, they describe my object so what color it is so in case if i want somebody to go and fetch my laptop so i will explain the properties to them so that they can go and identify it properly so if you look at this in this list so there is a uh, so since we have ocean let's see i have something related to ocean of course i have a penguin here i can use that or i can use something else okay uh, yeah i have a turtle here so let me click and let me add that particular instance to the world now here you can see that turtle is added okay if you feel the size of the turtle is too small i can make it bigger so don't worry i'll be revisiting this all so for now just go with the flow so i have made the turtle bigger so i have added an object to my world now this turtle is an object okay now what are the properties of this turtle the color of this turtle the size of this turtle okay and you can have lot the skin texture so they are all your properties okay so if you see when i am clicking the world okay just i am clicking on the sky now you can see in the left that the uh, heading is changing into the world's details okay now when i click the turtle now you can see in this particular pane okay this is called as the details pane you can see the heading changing as the turtle's details 
okay so whatever is select now i am selecting the ground in this case it is the ocean so now you have the grounds details so the first pane talks about the properties of the particular object you select so when i select the turtle these are the properties so color is one of the property of the turtle okay so you can you can see a downward arrow here so you can click on the downward arrow and you can change the color let's say i want to change it into some red color so i'm clicking uh red and let's hope the color is changing let me try some other color so purple brown okay i think since we are in the design mode it's not working so now let's move and check it change it here purple all right so this object uh, so maybe there is a change in color but that's not very obvious all right so let me try with some other object so i'll add this and another instance you can see that this is also added somewhere closer i can move this around now let me change try changing the color orange yeah you can see that there's a very slight difference okay slight difference in the color so brown now you can see that it is getting somewhat darkened okay so this is the level of control we can have over the color this particular property now you can see that it's it's a shoes are changing into some magenta color so i am changing the property of the particular object okay and there is also a second property called the opacity right opacity is nothing but the transparency of the particular object okay so if i give zero you can see that it is disappearing when i give 100% it's completely opaque so let's say you want to make a story with a ghost like turtle so maybe you want to give some 50% opacity right now you can see that uh, you can see the background but at the same time you can also see the turtle so it just it talks about the transparency right so you have a lot of list here so these are your properties so now i think you have an understanding about what a property is okay so let me get the opacity back to 100% okay now let's go to the second pane okay in this uh, details uh, sub pane so uh, the second one second option is called as methods all right so what is a method so uh, if you look at your laptop so what can your laptop do your laptop can switch on it can switch off okay it can uh, play a dvd it can read a use usb so those are the activities which your laptop object can do so methods is nothing but a set of action which your objects can do now i have this tortoise here okay or let me click this bigger tortoise so this is the bigger tortoise correct let me move it somewhere behind this is the bigger tortoise so you can see the first one it's called turtle move second one is called turtle turn so third one is turtle roll resize say think so these are all your uh, actions which your object can do so now let me uh, click this done button okay and uh, go to this uh, method window now let's say i want to move this uh, turtle okay let's say some 1 meter above towards the sky so what i do is now i am we are starting to program okay i can just click this and drag and drop it here okay so when you drag drop it it's asking about certain other details so i want it to move upward or downward or to the left to the right or to the forward of the turtle's direction okay where is it head do you want it to move some 2 meters in the direction of the head or the backward towards its tail okay now i want to just move it some 1 uh, meter above above the ocean level that's it okay so this is called as graphical program you don't have to type textual programs so this is your graphical programming you can just select the details so i have selected the turtle and turtle i have i want it to move and i have also given this is the direction it has to move upwards not down or not left and i also given the input as 1 meter so i want it to move for 1 meter now there is an option called more here so you can select this and you can just select certain other options i can even select some duration okay i want it to be moved for just for uh, i want it to move that 1 meter 
at a distance of at, sorry for a time of 2 seconds so when i add time to this you are controlling the velocity of the moment okay so let me add 2 seconds so this turtle will move upwards so i'm just reading this line here this turtle will move upwards for 1 meter during the duration of 2 seconds all right now let's just play it so you can see a play button to your left top okay just play it all right so you can see it here let me restart so can you see it so the turtle is moving in the upward direction right that's it so you have made your first line of code and you have uh, that is you have created the world and you have created some objects in it and you have also uh, controlled the method okay so what you want that object to do in your animation that also you have created now let's say i want it to just uh, okay it's, it is moving 1 meter above now after that i want it to just uh, roll you know roll over in happiness so there is another method here okay so you need to select the object so now if you see if you select the ground which is the ocean you can see there is a all the details that is there in your left to bottom window okay it's completely different okay so you, you should be uh, you should have selected that particular object which you want to manipulate so i am selecting this object again now i want it to roll okay so let me select this third option the third turtle roll and let me place below it so now it's asking me in which direction do you want it to roll and for how many revolution so i want it to roll in the left side for let's say two revolutions so i am selecting this okay once again if you want i can give the uh, time duration okay now its default is 1 second so let it be 1 second itself now i have added the second action for my turtle now this turtle will execute the action from the top to the bottom so first it will move up for 1 meter then it will start rolling for two revolution now let's see it let's just play it okay all right so you just uh, understood what just happened correct so it just uh, executes it in the same order now let me say i want the rolling to happen first so all i can do is just click on it and just move it okay so i have to there is a, a set of dots here okay so let me click that and move so you cannot uh, click on click anywhere okay just click here and move it above now if you see the rolling happens first then it moves 1 meter above now let's just play it the rolling happens then it moves 1 meter above now you can see that the rolling was happening at a very faster rate okay because the duration is only 1 second now let's say i want it to happen very slowly so i am going to change this into 2 seconds now let me play it once again so it's slightly slow correct yes i can change it to any other value okay i can there's an option called other so once i click on it you can you have this small uh, number pad so uh, let's say i want to have for have the revolution for two revolution for 8 seconds so one revolution takes 4 seconds and this is very very slow now let's see how it happens so you can see now that it is revolving very slowly and then it is moving in the upward direction all right so you have a set of methods here okay you have lot of methods you can just try it one by one and see what happens okay so you can just explore and learn on your own you don't need any tutorial you don't need any books of course the books are also available the tutorials are also available in the website they are free of course you can always have a look at them but you must understand that if you just click play around you can learn most of the things on your own and you can see that the software is also asking me okay for every 15 minutes the settings is in such a way that it will ask whether you want to save it or not so yes, i am going to save this uh, so let me give a name uh winner ls and save it on my desktop yes so it is saved now let's say i want it to think something okay after that i just want it to think something so i am selecting this option at uh, this method turtle think okay there are some default ones but i want to type my own text so i am just clicking the other and i am entering a string i'm just typing oh, wow i am so 
excited the central character of the steam webinar all right so i this is what i wanted to think okay yeah and of course i can also set the duration of its thinking so 2 seconds so now i am playing it again so the rolling happens very slowly then it moves upwards then now it is just thinking all right so there is also another one called say so i can just draw it drag it and drop it and it can just say let's say hello it's happening again it's moving upwards it's thinking something and then it is saying uh, hello so those people who have read the comics so you can clearly understand uh, so if you have that uh, bubble kind of a uh, uh, a thing that's uh, thinking and you have that pointed thing that is just talking those people who are familiar with the comics they will clearly understand that and uh, you can ask me one question so as i add more methods to it okay should i every times see the see it right from the beginning okay because it's going to become very lengthy so let's say i just want to uh, just know what happens here okay so uh, actually there are certain option but there is also another better option which i find it very easy okay there if, if you see in the top okay actually this is your video play video player so you can see the uh, preview of your animation here but you can see that there is an option in the top which is calling it as speed okay so this is one times the speed so during the playing itself i can just speed it up all right so the maximum speed is uh, 10 times the actual speed so i know i am running it at 10 times the speed so you can just see that it is just getting over within a fraction of a second each and every method is getting over within a fraction of a second and it is very interactive because you know you can control it even during the playing so if i want certain things to be slow i can slow keep it slow if i want certain to be to be fast i can just move it here and there and i can easily uh, steady a particular uh, part of my animation for fine tuning and you can also see into the right that there is a option called take picture so if you click on this a snapshot of this uh, particular animation will be stored as a jpg file in your my documents okay you can try this also yes so uh, we saw about the properties and then we saw about the methods now you have the third one called as function okay so a quick recap so what is property property is the actually the description of your object the color of the turtle the size of the turtle all right all those are the properties methods or the actions which your turtle can do so your turtle can move the turtle can roll it can think it can say so those are the actions which your object can do so that those are your methods now the third one is a function so function is it's a very common term you might have heard a lot in mathematics or in programming okay so what is a function the function is you can just think of function as a machine you give some input it takes that input it modifies it and it gives an output that's all so the nature of its function is uh, is just completely uh, about what kind of action it does on the input and give and what kind of output it gives you so uh, we even call it a sine function and cosine function correct in mathematics so what is the sine function so sine theta okay so it takes the angle theta so i am feeding 90 degree and what does it give me it gives me a value of 1 so sine 90 is equal to 1 so sine is a function it takes 90 degree and it gives you 1 correct so that is a function okay now here we will see what is a function so uh, we have seen properties we have seen methods now let's see the function you can see there is a, a subheading called proximity another subheading called size and third one called spatial resolution sorry spatial re relation then you have point of view and you have some other other things okay so function is is of like a formula okay so i can use it to do some operation all right 
So first, if, but you cannot use this function in all the places. So to know where you can use this kind of function, you can just to do a very simple test. Okay, just click it and drag it inside. Okay, now I am uh, keeping it once again back. Okay, now I want you to notice here in the method window. Okay, I just want you to notice here. So I am clicking this and I am dragging. So the moment I started dragging, you can see that some of the uh, boxes here they are turning into some uh, yellow color. Okay, so their border is turning into yellow color. Can you see here, 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 and also here? Okay, so it means that I can use these functions in all these places. Okay, and without any you know surprise, you can see that these places are where there are numbers. Okay, because function it usually takes a of course, you can take any data and you can process it. Okay, but this this function which you are taking, okay, it says distance to. So automatically it has to be a numerical function. It has to take some number and it has to give out some number. Okay, so I can just click it and let me put. Uh, so it has to move up for one meter and duration is two seconds, right? Uh, so let me put it in the distance itself. So move up one meter. So I am dropping it here. Okay. So move up. Turtle distance to the tortoise, right? So I have selected the other one. So the tortoise is uh, this particular uh, uh, other object, okay, which is looking like a you know a ninja turtle. And here you have your actual sea turtle. So how do you understand here? I mean, what is really happening here is, so I am just giving you the distance, but the distance I am telling it as the distance between the turtle and the tortoise. So you can see that. The turtle is here, the tortoise is here, and there is some distance between the turtle and the tortoise. Okay, so I want the turtle to move up in the upward direction for a distance which is equivalent to the turtle and the tortoise. You are able, able to understand? Initially, what we did, I gave a constant value. Okay, I just gave right two meters. So no matter what, no matter what the circumstance is going to be, it is just going to move two meters in the upward direction. But now I have made it into a variable. Okay, so look if you let's say in the current position there is some 10 meters distance between the turtle and tortoise. Now this will move for 10 meters in the upward direction. Now I am moving the uh, tortoise very close to the turtle. So I am decreasing the distance. Let's say now the distance is just 4 meters. Okay, now the turtle will move in the upward direction for only 4 meters. You are able to understand? So let's just try it out. Okay, now here let's I am assuming that distance is very less. So now let me play this. Of course, the rolling is happening. Yeah. So you can see there is this, this is the distance that is between this turtle and the tortoise. So due to the perspective from this view, it looks very closer. But this is the actual distance between the <coughs> turtle and the tortoise. Now let me change that. Okay. So let me make it even more closer. Okay, it's even more closer now. Very, very close now, actually. Now let me play the same thing. So it's uh, rolling around, and now let's see for how much distance it's moving up. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so you can see the difference. So this is the moment before it was even going very high. Correct. So what have you just done? So through this function, you have given a variable. And this is not just any variable. Uh, even I am not assigning a value to this variable. Okay. So this variable is taken from the at the particular instance of the state of the world. Okay. So I can have any number of objects around you. If I, if I want my turtle okay to always move in the other direction, okay, equivalent to the direction, equivalent to the distance between uh, this uh, turtle and the tortoise, I can do so using this. So this is just one other function you have here. Okay, so I just want you to play around with all the other functions. Okay, so I can use the tortoise's width. So let's say I want it to move in the upward direction equivalent to the width of the tortoise. Okay, where will you measure it? Is there a way to measure it here? No, but you can just directly use it here. All right, I can even use it here in the duration. So let's say the width of the tortoise is uh, uh, 5 meters, so the, its number is 5. So when I put it here, the duration will become 5. So it will be this moving up will happen for let's say 5 seconds. Okay, let's try that. So now no, I have not put this in the uh, distance, but I put it in the duration. 
of the same upward movement the duration is equal to tortoise's width but i don't know what's the width of the tortoise so now let's see that we can speed it up if you want okay so this is the distance and you can see the time right maybe it took some one second so that could be the width so you can change it and you can play around and you can understand all of this so you have lot of conditions here okay so i think we have uh, achieved our primary objective that is our primary objective is to understand what is the property what is the method and what is the function so what is what is the difference between them okay so property you describe the object okay color of the turtle and the method the action that can be performed by that particular object okay that my turtle can think it can speak so those are the methods and function they are a set of useful uh, processing commands okay uh, or they are a set of uh, useful uh, variables which takes its value from the uh, state of my world okay so i can use it to give some numerical data to my already existing uh, command lines my graphical command lines okay so i think now you have understood here uh, these three things okay this is a huge step and of course this event all right so now let me create a new event here okay so now there we have only one event so when the world starts do this do what this world dot my first method which is what we are seeing here so this is your first method okay now let's say i want to click on the uh, click on the turtle and i want something to happen so i create a new event so this happens the moment the world starts so when i press the play button it automatically starts correct you can see here i'm not doing anything else i'm just pressing it and it automatically starts its animation okay let me just close it let's say i want to do it only when i click the mouse button okay then what can we do so just uh, click this uh, option create new event and you can see the list of events that can happen right so when the world starts when a key is typed so when i type something on the keyboard i want it to happen so you you should use uh, these uh, events whenever you are creating a game okay when you are creating a game using this these are the options you have to use so uh, when a mouse is clicked on something while uh, something is true when a particular condition is true okay or when a variable is changing okay that can be a trigger for a series of events to happen and let the mouse move the object okay so when i just move the object here and there right and when a mouse moves the camera so these are some of the uh, trigger triggering uh, incidents okay which can bring about a series of animation which of course i am going to program in this uh, coding lines here in the bigger pane okay now let me say i want this uh, i don't want this to happen when the world starts i want this to happen when the mouse is clicked okay clicked on something so you can click on anything or if you just want it to happen when you click on the tot tortoise okay the entire tortoise that is a small one smaller one okay and uh, i want this first method to happen here so let me remove the first one let me delete the first one okay now the animation will not happen automatically it will happen only when i click and uh, not anywhere else but only on the tortoise okay now let's just check it play okay nothing is happening so i can click here i am clicking on the sky i am clicking in the ocean and i am also clicking in the turtle nothing is happening but now i am clicking on the tortoise and the animation automatically starts all right that's it so now you understand what is an event okay so for fun you can just add your own events so when the mouse is clicked on something so let the mouse uh, so you can also make the mouse move some object okay so let the mouse move some object so i can add some objects here uh so okay let's have a look at this in the end we need to do some programming see all of the softwares which you are seeing these all of these open source software okay the algodoo which is on the first webinar as well as this alice so they have a simple graphical interface in the in the as the front layer okay which anybody can use to do some programming to make this animation happen but there is also a background layer where if you are a real programmer 
you can always type this actual code so actually this alice is based on the java programming so if you know java program you can create your own objects you can create your own world using coding also okay so you start from the front layer then as you become uh, proficient okay as you feel the constraint of operating with only the available function available methods and available properties you would want to create your own function your own event your own properties you will push yourself so that you want the particular animation to happen okay then you will automatically start giving effort on the programming part so that is the advantage of having such softwares so you play around okay you are not driven by any driven by any okay uh, you are not doing this to do well in the exam or you are not doing this to get to get marks so you have an objective you have to tell a story and you have an animation that is running in your mind right so you want that animation to happen as it is as per as as it is in your imagination so you push it you push yourself to make that happen okay so the given methods will not be sufficient so the given method tells me that i can use this tortoise to do only these tasks okay it can say it can think it can play some sound okay i can also record a mp3 file and i can assign it okay let's say though i can let me draw drag and drop it so here we see i can make it some uh, sound certain things let's take this chicken okay so after this a tortoise will play a sound which is uh, which is coming with alice software okay or i can record my own voice and that also i can give it as a voice for this tortoise that also i can do uh so let me click on the tortoise animation let me speed it up so i am able to listen to this chicken voice i hope i hope you are also able to listen to that okay so these are the only things which i can do so let's say i want this tortoise to dance for a particular music okay that is not given here that method is not given here so i can create my own method here it says create a new method okay you can name it and you can create a new method so creating these new methods these are advanced topics so i don't think we can cover it in this uh, uh, webinar but i would suggest that you try it on your own but during that uh, 10 module course that or the one or two do one or two two days uh, hands on workshop we will definitely cover th those things also so i would like you to try out those things okay so let me click on this uh, total and another thing is you don't have to click on the entire turtle okay let's say i want the animation to happen only when i click on its head okay so turtle is an object but in the object tree here if you see uh, you have the first object called world then it is, you have something called camera and you have lighting then you have the ground and you have the turtle and tortoise but only adjacent to the turtle and tortoise you have a plus sign here okay so if you expand it you can see under turtle okay you have these uh, smaller objects okay you have back right leg back left leg front left leg front right leg the ta tail and you also ha have the head and adjacent to the head also you have another plus sign please click it so you can see that under head there is another object called mouth okay so these are all the various parts of your overall object okay so in object oriented programming language what we call this so this object world is called as a uh, it's called as your uh, parent okay because you guys you can see all the other objects are connected to this world okay this world is having the maximum left indentation so this is the parent for all of these objects okay this camera light ground turtle and tortoise everything falls under this world all right and these are called as the children of the world object so camera is the child of the world object okay of the parent world light is the child of the parent world and if you look at this turtle okay tail is the child of this parent turtle okay turtle is parent of this tail and head so this is another term which will, which they'll be using often in object oriented programming language so we have seen about the parent and child property method function and events 
now you can take up any textbook in object oriented programming language so any object oriented like a java or python these are the terminology which you will be seeing in the beginning but of course there if you want to create the similar animation you have to do a lot of work okay you have to do a lot use a lot of library and you have to make that happen but here you can just play around and you can make it happen so let me show you a more advanced game so let's click this uh, new world yes uh, just save it now the first one is tutorial okay i leave it to you to play with this and you have something called as examples please go to the examples which is the fourth option now let's have a look at uh, an animation which is already there okay so we have this snow love open it now let me play this animation so here if you see it's asking me to click so it doesn't start automatically okay this is exactly what we just did okay we clicked on the tortoise then the animation started now here if i only click it here the animation will start now let's watch this animation so you can see the camera object is rotating this is turning its head it is raising its eye so these are all the method which is already there or some if it's not there you have to create the object now this has melted away now it has become sad so that's it so you are now you are capable of creating such a simulation so sorry such a small uh, animation videos now let me even have a let us even have a look at the game so go to the examples again we have this flight simulator let me open that yes but of course you can see here it is uh, they have used lot of advanced modules here you can find something called loop and i given five times it means that this set of uh, uh, instruction lines will happen five times okay it will be looped again and again 1 2 3 4 then again 1 2 3 4 this will happen five times so this looping is possible i can also have an if else condition if one condition is satisfied if it is true i can make something happen if it is false i can make something else happen so when you are uh, when you are designing an anim a game which is a little bit complicated compared to your animation okay because in game you want certain uh, events to happen as per the decision of the player so it is then you will use such conditions conditional statements like if else or while statement okay if a player chooses some some event can happen if he chooses something else some other event can happen so these things you will start using once once you start uh, designing your games this is a wonderful software to create your own games very easily now they have created a game here now let me just uh, play it all right so uh, so they are asking me to roll this they have rolled it yes now i can control this using the arrow keys now i am using my arrow keys so i am moving to the left i am moving to the right i am going below and i am going above and if you press the space bar i can just revolve maybe we are trying to go into that uh, ring so such simple games you can create so what you are doing uh, here is it's a three dimensional game so creating such three dimensional game even with uh, this amount of graphics using conventional programming is a very daunting task the ultimate objective is to learn those that kind of programming but this gives you uh, very short learning curve play around and learn these basic programming concepts that is not to get uh, you know uh, tired or uh, uh, irritated soon most of that tend, that tends to happen correct especially i have seen certain students who start uh, doing their uh, gaming using uh, python or java it takes a lot of effort here you can play with this then 
you want you can create your own games or if the purpose serves you can just be satisfied with this kind of games so what happens if you just go and hit the ground all right so i, I think you were, you were able to hear, hear that so this software is uh, you know used in uh, carnegie mellon university all right in their programs so they usually conduct a course called uh, art plus entertainment okay there is uh, uh, that is sorry there is a uh, art plus entertainment plus engineering okay they have a course they even conduct it in their campus in uh, singapore okay uh, so the artists as well as the engineers they come together they form a team and that team of people they work on these animations the storytelling and some of them are even technical you can even find some engineering animation that can happen inside so if you want to just create a training video let's say uh, one person wants to let's say one person is sitting on a chair let's say he is the interviewer and another person who is who is the candidate he is walking in and you want to have a conversation between them so you can either use the pop up uh, if you want it to be a silent movie or you can record your own uh, voice as mp3 file and you can uh, assign that particular mp3 to the particular object and you can make this a uh, small training video as to how to re replay for an interview okay a very very easy to do just in a matter of 30 minutes to 1 hour you can make such animation in a more engaging manner so uh, so that's it so thank you for your participation